Fortunately, 1998's other offering is a lot more mansion-y. A little golden coloring book called either The Haunted Mansion or The Haunted Mansion Haunted Happenings, depending on if you're reading the cover or the title page. This is another one that I haven't found in print, but a scan of the entire book is available on archive.org for you to print out in color. Halloween morning started off like any other day. Mickey was walking into his office when he got a phone call. Why is the sign on the window facing in the office? Seems like a misguided way to advertise the business. Hello, squeaky cleaners, said Mickey. Yes, we've cleaned big houses before. We'll be right over. Wow, an immediate appointment. You just have no bookings. You really should have your sign facing outside, Mickey. Minnie, get the troops together. Mickey declared. We've got a big job. Yeah, that's great, Mickey. Do you mind? I'm trying to play free sale here. The squeaky cleaners had no idea what awaited them inside the house. They were going to have the scariest Halloween ever. This is one of the very few adaptations to use the Florida slash Tokyo mansion design, other than the video games that are specifically set in Tokyo. While everyone was unpacking the truck, Donald and Goofy took a look around the front yard. These big rocks have poems written on them, Goofy told Donald. Yeah, and just wait until the overflow queue has interactive gags that get boring way faster than you'd expect. What are you boys doing? Mickey asked Donald and Goofy. I want you to meet Mr. Cool. This is his house. That is clearly Lurch. You don't own the place, you're just the butler and you're pretending while the master's away. Donald notes that the house kind of reminds him of the Disney World Haunted Mansion. Wait, the Haunted Mansion attraction exists separately from this real Haunted Mansion that looks exactly like it? That is overly complicated lore for a coloring book. Then Donald asks Mickey if he's ever gotten the feeling that he's being watched. Oh, it wasn't enough to dress up as universal characters in the Mouse Factory, now you're cribbing Looney Tunes gags. Whoa! exclaimed Minnie. I wonder whatever happened to this member of Mr. Cool's family. Okay, you've all ridden the Haunted Mansion, why do you not recognize the stretching portrait? It's not just similar, it's the same piece of art. Is that just a more common painting in this world? Is it like dogs playing poker to you? Meanwhile, Donald and Goofy were busy in the library. They didn't know they were getting help from some strangers. Since they're in the library, I assume those are supposed to be the watchful bus, which I guess in this mansion are busts of Lumiere and Cogsworth. As Donald polished a mirror, he thought he spotted someone. Wait, but the statue is literally right behind you. This isn't a Jake McKeith situation. If you turn around, you'll actually see that statue. What is going on here? Anyway, for a while, Mickey and Minnie are oblivious to the hauntings while everyone else starts to get scared. Classic Abbott and Costello stuff with some mansion iconography. Donald and Goofy ran right past Minnie and Daisy. The girls were having a chat with Mr. Ghoul's wife, Madame Leota. Whoa, bombshell! Leota's married to Mr. Ghoul? Leota Blackheart Ghoul, mansion housewife. Also, this art of Leota is clearly Madame Medusa. They cannot decide which evil Disney madam she is. Tap the tambourine and see what happens. Cackled Madame Leota. With a prompt like that, it would be more concerning if this wasn't a prank. As Minnie tapped... The table rose into the air, and a ghostly figure flew over Daisy's head. When Minnie and Daisy saw this, they decided to catch up with Donald and Goofy. So that's how the tambourine awakens the spirits. It's just living in there, I guess. So eventually, even Mickey can't ignore the ghosts, and everyone's scared. And they end up going through the rest of the scenes pretty much in order as they show up in the ride, much like Ron Howard and Robbie Lester did decades before. They annoy the beating heart bride and make a break out the window. Oh, Ron and Robbie got stairs. Donald's not so lucky. When the squeaky cleaners reached the ground, they finally felt safe until they noticed they were being watched. Look, there's Archimedes again. He's just all over these mansion books. And he wasn't in the sing-along that Merlin was in. Did they have a bad breakup after Sword in the Stone? Mickey and the gang ran as fast as they could. When they passed a man and his dog, they all screamed and shivered. What's the matter with all of you? The man called after them. You look as if you've seen a ghost. Huh, this groundskeeper is less scared and more confused. That's a different take. He must be new on the job. Mickey and Minnie darted ahead of the group and came upon a tea party. Who would you like to join us? Asked one of the party hosts. Um, thank you, but we've got to run, said Mickey. And that's just what he and Minnie did. Okay, but none of these ghosts have been threatening or even unfriendly in any way. Mickey and the gang are just straight up prejudiced against ghosts. As the squeaky cleaners were driving off, Mr. Ghoul came running out of the house. Come back, Mickey cried Mr. Ghoul. You forgot all your cleaning supplies. That's okay, shouted Mickey. You 
you can use them to clean your own mansion next Halloween. Aside from the confusing acknowledgement that the ride exists in the world of the story, this is a cute coloring book. It probably could have just been a coloring book of scenes from the mansion without the Mickey and Friends story, but you know, the story's cute enough for a little golden book, and I do like the rendition of mansion characters in the Disney house style. But I don't buy that Leota and Mr. Ghoul are married. That ship is not canon as far as I'm concerned. So hurry back, we would like your company.